Hello, I'm Bill Serbin, and this is part four of the Cognitive Challenges of Effective Teaching video series produced by my colleague Steve Chu and me. The topic is prior knowledge and misconceptions and focuses on how students' lack of prior knowledge and their misconceptions can impair their learning and pose significant challenges for teaching. In this classroom scene, the teacher introduces a new topic and asks the class to think about the causes of seasonal change. One student has never learned about the topic and has no prior knowledge. Another student has a misconception that seasons are determined by the changes in the distance of the earth to the sun. A third student looks at a figure in the text and infers that seasonal change is based on the distance between the earth and the sun. And a fourth student remembers that there are seasonal differences between the northern and southern hemispheres and then remembers that the tilt of the earth on its axis toward or away from the sun is involved in seasonal change. These responses illustrate different states of prior knowledge. One student has no prior knowledge of the topic. Two students have misconceptions. One recalls an incorrect answer. At some point in the past, the student learned about seasonal change, but developed a misconception about it. The student now remembers the misconception. Another student doesn't recall an answer, but develops a misconception of seasonal change based on misinterpreting a diagram in the textbook and one student has sufficient and accurate prior knowledge. The student recalls key information about seasonal differences between the northern and southern hemispheres and is then able to construct accurate knowledge of seasonal change. As classroom teachers, we're well aware that when students are not prepared or lack background knowledge of the topic in class, that they struggle or have difficulty learning new material. A key factor in all learning is an individual's background knowledge about the topics and concepts they're learning. Relevant and accurate prior knowledge is the foundation on which new learning is built. And insufficient and inaccurate knowledge are significant causes of learning difficulties. To illustrate these challenges, consider several examples. Many studies have examined how prior knowledge affects learning. In one study, researchers examined how prior knowledge affects reading comprehension. They gave students new information to read and then tested their comprehension. Some of the students were good readers who typically score well on comprehension tests, and some were poor readers who did poorly on comprehension tests. Students also differed in one important way. The topic of the information was baseball. Some students knew a lot about baseball and some knew very little. This graph shows the results of the study. If you look at the differences between high versus low knowledge students, you'll see that the high knowledge students scored more than twice that of low knowledge students. In fact, the poor readers who knew a lot about baseball understood much more than good readers who knew very little about baseball. Remember, the central idea here is that people use their prior knowledge to make sense of new information. Many studies have shown that gaps in relevant background knowledge make it more difficult to interpret, organize, understand, and remember new information. A second type of prior knowledge problem is inaccurate prior knowledge, in which students have misconceptions about the topic they are learning. Their misconceptions can lead them to misinterpret, misunderstand, or even disregard new information. Some misconceptions are minor and easily corrected, but some can be stubbornly resistant to correction and a significant barrier to new learning. Here are two examples of misconceptions from introductory physics courses. In a physics course for non-physics majors, the instructor lectured about the physics of sound and used the violin to explain how sound is produced. The teacher explained how the sound of a violin is produced by the wood in the back of the instrument. Then, 15 minutes after, after the instructor explained explicitly that the violin sound is produced by the wood in the back of the instrument, the instructor asked the class this multiple choice question. 
The sound you hear from a violin is produced A, mostly by strings, B, mostly by wood in the back, C, both equally, D, none of the above. The histogram shows the students' responses. 84% of the students answered that, that the strings produce the sound. Only 10% of the students answered correctly. Even though the instructor had just explained how the sound is produced by the wood in the back of the instrument, students clung to the more maybe intuitive idea that it must be the vibration of the strings that produces the sound. Consider another example from physics. In this case, students are asked questions before taking a college physics course to assess their background knowledge of the course concepts. One of the questions shows a coin being flipped into the air. Students are asked to identify the forces acting on the coin as it is moving upward. Before taking a physics course, 88% of students identify two forces, an upward force propelling the coin upward and the force of gravity pulling the coin downward. But the correct answer is that there is only one force, that of gravity acting on the coin. This question illustrates a widespread misconception about force. We know from research, however, that by the end of their introductory physics course, many fewer students make errors of this type of, on this type of problem. However, researchers have also assessed students after they had successfully completed a physics course and found that 75% of them answered the coin toss question incorrectly. They identified two forces rather than one. Despite being able to demonstrate correct understanding of the concept in class, many students eventually reverted to a previously held misconception. To summarize briefly, insufficient prior knowledge and misconceptions are significant cognitive challenges. When students lack sufficient prior knowledge, they may have difficulty interpreting, organizing, grasping, and remembering new information. Similarly, when they have misconceptions, they may misinterpret misunderstand, and even disregard new information. These are pervasive challenges. Every day, students come to class. They're exposed to a large amount of new information, concepts, ideas, and skills to learn. Of course, they're going to have gaps in their prior knowledge. And of course, they're going to have misconceptions that, that they bring with them, and they will even form misconceptions in your class. The question really then is for us as teachers, how can we minimize these problems and better support student learning? Extensive research has focused on establishing teaching strategies to overcome prior knowledge problems. Here are four strategies that we recommend. First, pre-test before instruction to identify knowledge gaps and misconceptions. Pre-testing can help teachers identify knowledge gaps and misconceptions and then adjust instruction accordingly. You can use online practice quizzes or practice questions to get feedback about students' prior knowledge and misconceptions on a regular basis throughout a course. Second, activate students' prior knowledge. Sometimes students have relevant prior knowledge but don't remember it or use it in class as needed. A simple way to activate prior knowledge is to ask students at the start of class to write brief descriptions of major concepts relevant to that class period. Third, have students explain and elaborate. Teachers can use activities that involve students in explaining and elaborating the course material. These could be study questions that students answer before class or in-class activities in which students explain concepts to one another. Explaining their ideas helps students not only expand their understanding, but also to identify gaps inconsistencies and inaccuracies in their understanding. And fourth, try out refutational teaching. Refutational teaching is a method to try to change serious or stubborn misconceptions. In this approach, the instructor assigns a reading that directly refutes a known misconception. If the reading is not sufficient to produce change, then the instructor gives a follow-up lecture or explanation in class it emphasizes the correct conception and refutes the misconception. If you'd like to learn more about prior knowledge problems and strategies to deal with them, here are some resources. 
One is my website called Taking Learning Seriously, which has additional information about these and other barriers to learning. We also recommend two articles, one that elaborates on prior knowledge and one that explores how to help students overcome misconceptions. After viewing the video, we hope you have an opportunity to explore these problems with colleagues. If so, here are a few discussion questions to get you started. So thanks for your attention and we hope you will explore the other videos in our series.